My name is David Wild, filmmaker, actor. Um, I'm talking to James Price, uh, writer, director, you know, um, madman, everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? On entrepreneurial, you know, make your own films. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, great filmmaker. Um, you know, one one of the ones that I noticed in the, the Scottish scene a few years ago when I first met you. You've got a film. Is that Sea Dog Days? Is that a film or a series? Um, that's just that's a strange thing, Dean. It's 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 actually both. So it's like um, right. there's two completely different versions that are going to exist. So the version playing at the festival is sixty minutes. It's like a little short feature film. Um, right. It's a completely new edit. It's completely different. And then there's going to be a version released on iPlayer on April seventh, right? Which We're is actually like eighteen minutes longer. Right. We're going to come back to it at the end, but this is this is the main reason as well because yeah. it's coming out. It's coming out at the GFT, which is the Glasgow Film Festival, next month. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back to that. So, yeah, let's let's go for a start. I mean, when I first seen your work, it was really um, the Edinburgh Festival. Was that 2019? I think it was. Or 2020, 2019? That's right. That's right, yeah. Boys Night. 19, um, yep, 19, yep. When I was out there uh, following about a fucking influencer with a camera, Everybody said to me, oh, what, what film have you got screening here? I don't get any fucking film screen. I'm following an influencer with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> but he bumped into you, and uh, he's, he said some kind of things about my, uh, my first film, which you, it doesn't deserve. But anyway, I appreciated that, you know. Um, so that's how we kind of connected. You're too hard on it, man. You're far too hard on it. You're far too hard on it. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right now. I should. I should have just treated that as my film school. That's yeah. all. It was a short film on film. Doesn't matter if it's good, bad, art, popcorn, whatever the fuck. You know, uh, I'm over. I'm well over it now. You know, but uh, yeah, that's where we connected. And then I came to see your film a few nights later, uh, Boys Night, which was great. That played at the festival. But what was your first? Um, I know you start, started in writing at first. It wasn't even filmmaking, was it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. I taught myself how to write scripts in my teenage years. Like, uh, I was quite sick. Uh, I've got I've, I've Crohn's disease and I was always no well. And I took really bad no well at like 18. So I had a lot of free time. So I would watch yeah. films that I loved and read the scripts of the films. And through doing yeah. that, I kind of yeah. learned how to write a script and picked up the format and pretty easy. And um, it was my early 20s, I kind of started getting the, you know, a bit of bravery to start sending scripts out. And yeah. I got real lucky, man. Of two screen education end, but picked up a short film called Concrete and Flowers, and then this thing called Jump Cut did one that I wrote called Dropping Off Michael. And Dropping Off Michael did pretty well at festivals and kind of blew up, and um, that was directed by a great director called Zam Salim. And that that, that kind of that propelled me forward a little bit, and then but I realised very quickly, like I, Dropping Off Michael nominated for a few Baftas, and I thought that was it. I thought I was. Thought it was going to be oh, in the yeah, Scottish really, Illuminati, I... hanging about with David Heyman, and then uh, <laughs> I realised very quickly that wasn't what happened. <laughs> and, uh, so I realised yeah. in 2016, I said, like, oh, fuck, I need to just actually make more stuff or else I'm going to be forgotten about. Yeah. So I started scrambling and trying to make more little no-budget shots. And uh, I had seen Dropping Off Michael as well. That was uh, great. And, you know, there's a, some great actors in that, you know, which makes a big difference. You know, if you've got a really good script, great actors, yeah. then you, you can't really go fucking wrong. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's going to get, no, get turned into yeah, a feature. Yeah. Is that going to get turned into a feature? Did you say at some no, point, maybe? Now there's there's talk about it, man. There's talk about it, but it's um it's hell it's uh, it was moving and then it kind of stopped moving. You know how it is, you know, man. It's know like, you know, one minute something's it's... happening and then it, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah. So it's like it's yeah. hard to say, right, man. But basically, the company who were in kind of control of it have kind of given the rights back to me and the director. So there's a chance it could still happen with somebody else. But we're um, yeah, we're exploring options. It's, it'll be a different thing. It's, it's it'll be very different from a short, which I yeah. think is what kind of. Was, is worrying people uh, the money people but um, yeah we just do a, do a repeat of the short film we want to make it something bigger and different aye, aye, aye. well that's the thing I was going to ask as well I've asked maybe a couple of times before where you're in that situation where you make films with um, you know industry money but you've done films with the industry money as well you know I've done an industry funded film and most of my films are non industry now so what what's the the pros and cons that you would see getting money for you know um is that the good side and the bad side or is it all good getting money? do you know what I mean what's the because I know that you lose do you lose some creative control if you get your have you got to stick to your sort of model you know definitely as soon as you're doing, like dog days for instance for the BBC you know what I mean it's like um, at the end of the day 
it's not for my audience, it's for their channel, you know what I mean? So, like, you need to, yeah. you need to kind of meet them in the middle and kind of walk a line that kind of keeps you happy and everybody else happy kind of thing. But I think the mate, like, man, my, my favourite work I've did is the stuff that you've been in, like, Spyro and uh, the music video. I love the stuff where you're making it and it's just all coming from the heart and you don't need to worry about money. The only difference, really, man, I think, uh, is the guilt, you know, from having people work, work for free. But I yeah. just like you know I just I just love making stuff, man. Like that's my main thing. Like I just yeah, and I just like going for it. And I feel like the, I feel like when I, when I've been at my most purest and um, closest to my own voice and what I want to do in the future has been the work I've did with no financial industry backing so far. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that is a difficult thing because we still need money to make bloody films. You know, it is the it is the thing where nobody's going to give you a check just to do exactly what yeah. you want to do because. Especially if you go, right, I'm going to do this crazy shit, it's not even in a script, because I've just come up with this idea, and you go, whoa, well, whoa, well, wait a minute, do you know what I mean, this is no here, you know, so that's a, um, yeah. it, you know, I completely yeah. get that, you know, and I've seen, I seen the joy in that when you were making that 48-hour project, uh, Spiral, and the Sopranos, which we'll get to the, the music video, I've seen the, the sheer just like, painting, you know what I mean, let's do this, let's do that, you know, um, you can see the difference, but yeah. that's an intro, but... That's an nature of business. I think if you're a filmmaker, you have to be able to wear both hats. Do you know what I mean? You know, oh, uh, definitely. And, like, and they both kind of blend in each other a little bit too. You know what I mean? There is moments on the uh, even funded stuff where you, you do have freedom to kind of, you know, play around. But it's just, you know, I do like ultimate freedom. I, I embrace the chaos. I love it when, you know, like things go wrong and you have to think on the fly. And like, I, I just, I love the energy of it. There's something more energy, energetic about like, um, just going for it, man. They're not caring about money and like you're just making something that you want to be good. You know, you want it to be good, you want people to like it. And um yeah, you're not you're not trying to please somebody who's backed it, you know. What I mean, it's just purely for your own exactly your own, your own you sake. Know, that, that, and, uh, and, uh, and and making an audience happy. That's what I was saying. I saw recently that there was a uh, headlines about Francis Ford Coppola's latest film and oh it's chaos and everybody's walking off and it's chaos and it's like because he funds his own films now, because his wine business and his hotels, he's got total creative freedom. Um, it's taken him years, of course, but it's that thing where it's, well, if anybody does chaos, it's Coppola does chaos best. Do you know what I mean? There was chaos yeah. in The Godfather. Was chaos, yeah, man. But, you know, and it's that chaos, that controlled chaos, that can actually be really fucking interesting if you're not doing, do you know what I mean? Uh, as you know, you know. Yep. Um, it's trying to find that balance, isn't it? You know. Yeah, it is, man. It is. And then I think controlled chaos is a, Way, man, even Dog Days, to be honest, was pretty chaotic. Shoot, it was pretty. Um, a lot went wrong, uh, so there was a lot of thinking on the fly and stuff. So, but um, I think if everybody's safe, you know, and everybody's kept, you know, safe and fed and watered, and um, and things are a bit crazy, and people are up for the madness, then there's nothing better than that when everybody's kind of in on it and, and on the, you know, you, you get a high off that energy, man, and just going for it. And yeah. Just, yeah, uh, if you've got and if you've got the right actors, I like to roll that way as well. Some don't. Some need their exact script, and some like to, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, I've, I've, I've learned that the hard way. Some people don't like it when you're saying it. I'm like, fuck the script, fuck the script, yeah, fuck yeah. the script away. The script is hard. No, I need my script. I need my fucking script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, with that that night, you shot you shot a. Uh, well, let's talk about this. We, we'll, I mean, we'll jump back and forth here, right? Because I want to talk about the Peter Mullen thing as well. Um, yeah. yeah when, that night I turned up. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been lucky enough to be involved, but it's very small parts, but it's just been, it was great. It was great fun. You know what I mean? Uh, that, that day, I turned, the night I turned up, um, the Sopranos, uh, it was it must have been Michael, I always get his name wrong. The, his son name, what's his yeah, name? I don't like a Michael. I was called Michael Maltosani. I was saying, man, Michael P. Uh, yeah. Christopher yeah. for the fucking Sopranos, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Yeah, I turned up one night. He says, "Do you want to turn up? Do you want to play a wee part in something?" And it's like, and as soon as you say that, it's like, "Yeah, I do it. I do it. I don't know what the fuck it is. Don't care." So I turned I up. Like, and you yeah. didn't know. Like, you didn't. I don't think you knew what it was until you were in my living room. <laughs> you nah. were in this room. It's the real. Yeah. Ah, you, I got about five minutes to think. Me, 
But I look, if you like somebody's work, if you like somebody's approach and, and everything like that, it's a fucking no-brainer, do you know what I mean? Because you know it's going to be fun and you know it's going to be interesting. Um, but that that was really good because that was like within five minutes or something, we'd run about with fucking coke and machetes and, and the living room. <laughs> I know. And I was getting all about in control because the table was full of booze, so I was kind of throwing them back within same, like 10 minutes. Same, same, yeah, man. Look, we, I, I, the deal here, Alan's not much a drinker, but I just remember him, we mean him just kept taking shots of whiskey and the... Uh, it helped me get the character, man. I got the character from that. I'm glad I was acting in that scene as well. But uh, yeah, you were, so great, you were great. You were great. You were great in it. You know, you were doing. I know, man. I think that's that's the one role I can play. Is like a wee a wee Raj Glesga boy. That's all I can do. I'm not. That's Al- my reign. Alpha <laughs> Berlin and Boogie Nights. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was that. That was that. That's what I was saying. That was man, hundred percent. Uh, because I just remember. I, I, wait a minute. How many shots have I had? And I picked up. I, I'm playing with a machete. I think. And there was another scene, I'm moving, right, we move, and I've got the machete, and you, you grab it, right? You, you take the fucking machete away, because I was getting half cut by then. You, know, and I was, <laughs> you grabbed it, I remember you grabbed it, right? Just put that fucking down, right? You put that down. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, it's fun, man, and that's that's the, the, the thing I like about you as a filmmaker. You like that school that you always read about, like the Casavetes type, that you just, and you can you understand, what a lot of filmmakers don't understand actors. You no, know, definitely, yeah. You know, even even Ridley Scott he admitted it in the early days, he didn't know how well we actors, you know, and because a lot of filmmakers are so technical and they get everybody right the technical and then they forget about the actor and the actors in front of the fucking camera go to give the performance. So yeah, actually yeah. You, you you doing some acting, know that you have to be an actor to be a really great director, you don't as many great directors, but your best friends are Scorsese, you know, they're in Casavetes, they understand the actors and that's why they, yeah, they're man. Making, you know, it's such an, an important part of it. Do you know what I mean? As you know, yeah, you know. Well, yeah. I, I, that's the one compliment I give myself is I'm a, I'm an actor's director. I'm not a technical director. You ask yeah. me about a lens. You ask me about a lens and a type of light. I, I don't know. I don't have a fucking clue. But uh, yeah, yeah. I know, I, know, but, I, know, I know how to work with people, and I know, I know how to uh, like. And yeah, and yeah, man. That's my main thing. Is like just it's all, for me. It's all about the performance and the. And I love giving like a DOP and the you know and a gaffer. I like I like them being able to bring their own artistic touch to it. I don't want it to feel like I'm, you know, taking control of that. Uh, Dog Day's a good example, man. Like, the, the DOP Gavin Hopkins, like, he, sh- he shot it like it's a, you know, like it's a movie, the, the movies that we grew up loving, man, and it's, it feels like a film. It does not feel like a BBC iPlayer yeah. show, which it should. So it's, uh, and that's because I let him come with his own vision, man, which he absolutely smashed, and it's, um, exceeded all my expectations so it's like i think if you give everybody their freedom man let them do their jobs correctly it's like you can't go wrong you know i mean my main thing is just working with the actors and getting everybody in and getting exactly everybody. yeah well that's why you don't need to know about a lot of technical stuff because it's about picking if you get a, a team around you you're picking the right team that already know that you know yeah. And, yeah. unless you're making films my way where i'm fucking shooting them because i'm not i'm not one with teams but that's why it's, <laughs> but you don't need to know all that stuff if you've got a good team and that's a good yeah, point that's what that's what I learned over the years. It's like somebody says to me, I don't always 100% know what I want, but I know 1,000% what I don't want. And that means that you're going yeah. to get the input for the DOP and the production designer, and you're going to get in freedom to bring their yeah. stuff. See when, see, when a filmmaker says, I know everything exactly what I want, I go, I fucking avoid them because you're going to, you're going to tell the DOP. Yeah. You're going to, do you know what I mean? You need to give people that freedom, and that's what's great about your stuff. Do you know what I mean? It is like a... You know, it's just, it just, it just feels good. The, the short experience I had working with you, you know, it felt so much fucking fun, man. You know, no, I appreciate um, it. I will be last, man. We'll be last. We'll be more to come, man. No, that's I, what I think. No, I'm just, hey, I'm just dying again, man. Hey, like, everybody wants to work with you, so I'm not. <laughs> I got a chat. I got, I got a little cut of all, so I'm, I'm happy, man. No, um, we'll, we'll jump back and forth here, but you worked with Peter Mullen. I know he was, you were a big fan of Peter Mullen. He was one of your big inspirations, wasn't he? What was that like? Yeah, man, it was like Orphans was, you know, I think Orphans was the first proper Glasgow film I saw. I must have been nine or yeah. ten. And yeah. uh, it was the first time I saw a film where people were talking the way my family talked. And, you know, it's like my dad worked in a pallet factory, like the, one of the characters. My brother was, my big brother was getting stabbed all the time, like one of the other characters. So I feel like a film was made just for me. So okay. like, it was also the first time I felt like, um, oh, I don't have to go to America to make a movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can you can make a movie here. I didn't know people were making movies here, so that that was such an eye opener, man. And that film stuck with me f- for my whole life. And um, yeah, getting a chance to work with him was unbelievable, man. He's such a cool dude, man. Just such so laid back, so just just naturally, just that instinct thing, man. Just so 
just instincts yeah. are switched on. Just like no, like in, in, like in general, like um, I can't stress enough how little direction I gave on that. <laughs> like it was just literally was like, oh, that's it, we got it. <laughs> that, that's it, two things done. Let's move on. But yeah, if, you've got, if you've got great actors, they're already coming. Yeah. They are. They already. You're already employing the ones that you know you can do the job. It's like they always say to be Woody Allen. They never. Never gave much direction, and there's a lot of fucking Oscar win winners for those sort of films. And it's like yeah, the man. actors are coming there; they already know what they're doing. So just yeah, they put the work in. Yeah, definitely, they've they hundred percent put the work in already. You know, I mean, they've, like, they've, yeah. they know what they're going to do. And uh, yeah, man, like just he absolutely smashed it. And it's weird, man, because he, 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 the character was based on my dad. The character he was playing. And this, right. this was this was, was a BBC Four show called Skin. It's on um, BBC I Player. So I think it was, I think it was episode six. Yeah, on episode yeah. four. Um, but um, yeah, it's weird. He didn't know. I don't know if he knew too much that it was based on my dad. He probably surmised, but right. it's unbelievable how much, like, just like through weird supernatural. I don't know how, but he like really, it really captured the yeah the essence of my dad without ever asking a question or knowing about my dad. So it was really odd. I think they just come from a similar. You know, old yeah. school mentality. So he was able to channel it pretty easily, I think. Yeah, yeah. And did and on that, did you have a lot of sort of control to to do stuff again? You know, like in terms of because that was a BBC. Is that BBC, that was a BBC, wasn't it? Yeah, it was BBC Four, right? So yeah, I mean, like I was surprised how much we got away with. You know, like there was a lot, of, a lot got cut in the edit. Some you know, there was a lot. There was some darker jokes and stuff that, that had to go. But uh, right, right. You end up realizing though, it's like you know, it's like a lot of it, it makes sense, like because some of it could be a bit too abrasive and maybe put some people yeah. off. Yeah, Aye. but the thing is, though, man, like it, I, I man, it was surprised. Like that isn't my type of thing, yeah. I know, like I must admit, like uh, although anybody from if BBC see this, if, if you're doing more, give me a shout. But doing a <laughs> doing a fucking monologue show, it's not my it's not my bag. You know, what I mean, it's not something yeah. I watch. It's not something that I was, you know, that's my. In my wheelhouse, kind of thing. It's like actors talking directly to the camera, kind of feels a bit too feet for me. Um, uh, yeah. like, so my, yeah. my whole goal was to make try and make it feel as much like short films as possible. Have yeah. kind of give up yeah. narrative structure. So I, I I wrote and directed the Peter Mullen one, and then I directed one starring Michael Soccer, who was amazing from. Uh, well, was and, yeah. He was great, man. So my whole thing was just try and make them as feel like short films as much as possible, and not just like your average. You know, I've seen a few of them, the old BBC ones, and it's literally just a. Character, an actor sitting on a seat talking to the camera and it's like I could wait to see this in more, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. It's, <laughs> it, it's getting that side when you get that side in you like cinema as well, character but cinema. You want to just yeah. get that camera moving and you 100%. know um, but it's I think it is great to um experiment with different styles. It's not even you because then it, sometimes it brings you right back to go, well that's no this is me but You've tried these other things. I think that's really important to definitely, you know, definitely, definitely, hundred you know. percent. Yeah, man. Like, even the music video, like I, I've never, um, I don't always. I look. Like, I'm a big fan of the director Daniel Wolf, who did um, the music video. Did a bunch of music videos, but the the ones that the most famous ones were with Jake Gyllenhaal running around London killing hipsters. It's called the Shoes Time to Dance. Right. When I saw his music videos, that was the first time I thought I really want to make a music video, and. Uh, and just because he injected it, just it feels like a little movie, you know what I mean? It just feels like a short film. It does. And just, Aye, it does. Yeah, that's yeah. that man. So just like a song playing over it. So it's like, uh, that's the only way I could do a music video. I couldn't do a music video when I'm filming a band playing, you know, that's not me. No, I just I, I'm, I'm the same. It just doesn't really interest me much. No. It's something different yet. Do you know what I mean? It'd bring so a different... if, I, if I had people approach me to do music videos, and then my first question is, like, do the band want to be in it? Because if they want to be in it, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if, I could, if I could just make a little movie and they can put their song right. over it, then 100%. If, Chris, if Christopher Walken's dancing across the fucking roof, I want to do it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's, going be, it's going to be something different, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. so you've done, skip, you've done another one um, the, with a writer from the young team. Yeah, man. I yeah, keep, I'm fixed. It's, 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 it's a long time infectious nihilism and small metallic pieces of hope and uh, I, that I'm was glad you said the, it to me <laughs> <laughs> I know, really, yeah. that was for the Edinburgh Book Festival and um, it was kind of loosely connected to the young team because young teams are development is a TV show with synchronicity right now which I think when right. that happens that will probably be massive but um, but Graham was just one of the most intelligent people I've ever met he's such a smart human being man and just a really 
really passionate, really just wants to give back to you yeah. know the community they grew up in. And uh, yeah, working with him it was a dream. And uh, it was it was a really intense shoot. We, we only had two days, man. I feel like if I had an extra day, we would uh, we could have fleshed a little bit. But I, I still I think those, it's one of my favorite things I've did that, and I actually do think um, there's moments in it that's more beautiful than anything I've been involved in. Steve Cardinal was a deep DOP and the uh, yeah, yeah, it, was, just made it, it was visual moments that were so great, yeah, you know. Man. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of yeah. Piece, you know, it's kind of it's an interesting one, you know. It's kind of um, even that kind of felt quite different for me when in terms of when Graham just had this. Graham just knew what he wanted it to be, and um, my thing was just kind of trying to you know make sure I made time happy because because I come from a writer initially. Um, anytime I'm working or directing another writer's work, I really am racked with fear about like I need to make sure I capture their vision you know what I mean I, I want to make sure I'll bring myself to it but I want them to I want them to be happy with it because I've I've had people direct my stuff and I've not been happy you know so yeah, yeah. Ways. I, don't, I don't want to make anybody feel that way uh, it's quite it's quite scary actually in a way that <clears throat> some people wouldn't want the right of there because you're bringing your vision yeah Stephen King <laughs> Kubrick definitely wouldn't want fucking Stephen King on the set. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but I think we use guys because that, that um, was it Graham comes from that world and he knows that and you understand that world. So you're already in a sort of zone. That's, definitely. You know, do you know what I mean? Definitely. So it helped, I think it helps, helped, you know. It's weird. Me and Graham just get on. Me and Graham literally are like the same person, just from different parts of the, uh, yeah. the country. It's he's in Eldrie, I'm in Glasgow, and I'm in Springboard. So it's like, um, me and Graeme literally were at the same raves with our young teams in like 2009. Right. We, we probably walked past each other and didn't even know. Right. I, 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 if somebody came to his both friends and said, look, you have a best-selling book and you'll be fucking over. You'll be down to one. I'd be like, oh, he's yeah. not a recce. He's not a recce, man. <laughs> 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 no, I, I enjoyed that, man. That was good. Um, yeah. In terms of, before we go to dog days and that, because I've always been fascinated by your, I've always wanted to ask, I don't have to ask you before, with the fascination, which I think I understand why it is, because coming from Glasgow and Scotland, it's so fucking grim here and gritty. <laughs> so we write about make stuff. But your fascination with Miami Vice, you know. Yeah. You're, you're a big fan of Miami Vice. How did that happen? Is that through your father watching movies? Or yeah, serials, through my you know? dad, man. So like from literally the age of six, my dad would tell me stories about this guy that lived in a boat with a pet alligator called Elvis. <laughs> and then tell me stories about Miami Vice. And I was obsessed with seeing it. And do you know what it was like back in the day, man? Like, yeah, kids yeah. nowadays don't realize how lucky they are. Like, they want something, they can find it. Yeah, I spent like seven years of my life searching for Miami Vice, it wasn't released here. It eventually came out on Men and Mortals when in about 2001, and right. uh, that was my first time seeing it, and it blew me away. And uh, yeah, and that is it's escapism, you know what I mean? It's like, so like Miami yeah. Vice is like a guilty pleasure, but I was also, I, I will defend some episodes, some episodes are genuinely like great Michael Mann movies, but. There's all the odd ones, you know, they say, well, James Brown showing up with aliens and stuff where it's a bit mad to <laughs> jump the shot. Oh, I, need, I need to see that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's season five, man. Yeah, jumping it, in that, that's, 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 that's pretty cool. But, jumping away for a second, did you ever see the James Brown man with Gary Oldman plays the devil? Oh, great, man. Yeah, what, 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 what was that? Was that car adverts? What were they? It was a, it was a car advert with uh, yeah, Gary Oldman. Gary, Gary, Gary Oldman was like Keith Richards playing the devil. In Las Vegas, and James Brown comes up to renegotiate his contract because he done a deal with the devil. He'd be a star, and he can't do the fucking split. Can't do the fucking splits anymore. You know that pitch straight away is like <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, but so Miami Vice. I I, I think because I mean, look, Michael Mann's a great director, so there's always yeah. going to be episodes in there that are going to be really. That's good, man, you know? that's man. It is like you said, though. I never really thought about it like that, but it is like you know, like I think for, especially for my dad. My dad never left the. Uh, the UK never had a passport, no life. So I think for him, it probably represented like you know just this form of escape. You know what I mean? For like an hour a night, he was in Miami. You know what I mean? He wasn't in Springburn. You know, so it was exactly. The same, you know, definitely. I mean, man, I think that's part of you know cinema and TV and like that, what we will do. That was probably one of the motivations for me doing my first film, even though it did not fucking turn out what I wanted. Instead of doing a little film about actors in Glasgow, I went to go, I went to, go to Las Vegas, I went to go to LA, I went to go where the fucking sun is, I went to be characters at the yeah, time. So I get that side where it's kind of colour and fucking, you know. Um, but I can see that side in the future. If you, if you took that spirit of Miami Vice and the grittiness that you have and you stuck it together, 
making a movie like Cocaine Cowboys. I think you'd do yeah, that. Would be like, that would be you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. That's you. No, definitely. That would be the Scarface, dream. Definitely. You were know, Scarface type. You know, yeah, man. Uh, oh, I love it, man. Hundred percent. But also, so, man, like uh, I must admit, I know you're hard on pasty pieces, man, but. Even, know, the that was, that... even the title, I can't even say the fucking title. <laughs> I, I know, yeah, I know it's what you're saying. It, it, um, sounds, it sounds like a children's fruit. Uh, it does, man. It's got, <laughs> you, you're wrong about that. It's actually got like a real reservoir dogs, like, you know, swingles. <laughs> it's got, it, it does. It was like, that's yeah. weird. You know, you, you, to what we, man, like, I was like, Orphans, My Name is Joe, and then in Global Video, that I just remember <laughs> I used to see all the time, Face to Faces. And then I remember well, watching it in Blue Away, man, and it was, a, it was one of those movies where, and the thing I remember the most is, uh, I think we sat in the bandstand in one of the scenes. Is it? We had the bandstand in Glasgow, uh, Kelvin side. Yeah, yeah, Kelvin, stand. yeah. And I remember yeah. he's quoting uh, Al Pacino and Heat. Yeah, and I still, yeah. I still got it in my head. I've still, <laughs> from all these years. Uh, I got five dead bodies of Venice Boulevard. Just being sorry, I'm taking a quote. Al was good. At, Al was good at that shit. Um, but yeah. you're talking about it's swingers. The very first night that we landed in LA, and we go in the hotel rooms, and we were all going to go for a meal before we we're going to shoot the next day. We, we said, right, well, let's go to a bar restaurant somewhere, you know, and we walked across the street and I went, it's the fucking Dresden. Three That's amazing. That's so cool. It was a fucking, just, hey, it was just sheer opportunity, you know, walked across the street. They didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. I was fucking, <laughs> and, do, and do you know that, do you know the couple there that were playing Staying Alive, you know, with the organ? Yeah, Staying man, Alive. the jazz band. They were there. Yeah. They were there that That's night. That's so cool. That's so cool. So I walked in with fucking Alan McCarthy, like fucking Vince Vaughn and John Favreau, walked in. <laughs> And the guy who put us to the table and I went, this is fucking surreal. And I went like that, this is fucking on, this movie's working. <laughs> because this is, a, this is an omen. Well, That's an omen, yeah, man. <laughs> well, did I know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, no, but what I don't, why get back to your stuff, man? No, but I understand the stuff about Miami Vice and it's the, it's the escapism for the gritty realism. Do you know what I mean? I get it. You know, yeah, That's why I was asking, it. you know. Cause no, I, I mean, my main thing too, man, is look, look, I've cut my teeth making like social realism and depressing shorts. You know what I mean? And like, I'll be honest, man, that's not who I am. And that's not what I want to do. I see that. I, I, I don't see you as a, a Ken Loach. Uh, or no, a, a, man, I'm not. I see man, no. if I've got to be Ken Loach, I'm going to be joining Ken Loach up with, you know, like uh, the Safety Brothers or something. I mean, I want to make it stylish. Safety I want to inject style. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, man, I want to inject no. a sense of style into this, like this kind of storytelling, which is quite... Um, it's, just, it's been done, you know what I mean? I, like, and, and, and I used to think it was a loaded term, Scottish miserableism, but it, it, it's like, it, there is a, you know, it's, and you, you you do great to avoid it, you know what I mean? But it's like, it's such a, and, I, and I, man, I'm thankful for it. It's got me this far, you know what I mean? But it's like, uh, I, I, I think, I think you still got to get established with your authenticity. If you look at, put it this way, put it this way. Scorsese started on main streets and you could say that was a great realism of that area. But he didn't yeah, stay yeah. there. He evolved, didn't he? You're watching Taxi Driver, and people don't. Th I don't think there's. You see, Taxi Driver is great realism, but it's also surreal. Yes, there's, definitely. There's definitely. a guy yeah. living in his fucking head, and then yeah, Scorsese's man. career went into these other areas and expect. So I think you you go to start off with, with your authentic voice first, because that's where the yeah, best films come from. And then and then find out what it is what you want your style to be. You know what I mean? Beyond exactly. Your voice. Exactly. Yeah, man. You know, because uh, I think if you. This is the thing, look, if we see any filmmaker's name, whether it's Tarantino, Scorsese, Abel Ferreira, who I love, and I know you love. I'm, um, same. I'm, I'm the same. And uh, you think, okay, that, that person, that's that person's brand. And I've always thought, I don't know my fucking, and after all these years, I've not found my stamp yet. I don't know who the fuck I am. And I think as a filmmaker, that's the kind of thing where you don't consciously do it. You no. just have to get. You have to go through a lot of films that you don't want to make and mistakes that you find eventually find who you are. It might take you, might take you five years. It might take you five, twenty years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's what I love about like, Paul Schrader as a director. That's <laughs> what I really love about Abel Ferrara. Is not every movie is like uh, a gold yeah. star, amazing, but there's always something uh, yeah. interesting now, and they're yeah. always exploding and they're always taking chances and like. They yeah. never play safe, and, and I think that's really important. And um, that's that. That's that nail. Yeah, never playing it safe. Abel Ferrer could have stuck with the King of New York and did a whole series of movies like that. But he never took out the fucking rose. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. He never just stuck with that genre. I think you've no, got. To get, you're on a motorway. You've got to get off it right away. You know, it's yep. like. 
Um, that's where people say to me, oh, you're going to make me crime things? And I'm a fuck. I'm going, I want to go off that and go into something else. Oh, it's all, I love crime genre. I mean, I love the yeah. crime, but I want to get something. I want to do a film about a fucking ballet dancer that nobody would be a ballet dancer off their head or something like that. It's some fucking thing that nobody <laughs> yeah, so, would no, definitely 100%, 100%. I'm the same way. I'm the same way, man. I'm the... Yeah, like Dog Days in the Weird Ways kind of got love story element to it, so that was kind of, but so, it's also got a bit of a, that's the, the so, so sorry man, I don't want to interrupt you, so, so dog, dog Days, what's the sort of idea, you know, the film as a whole? whole? Yeah, it's kind of, it's about, it's about a guy who's kind of, you know, he's going through a kind of rough time in his life, and um, he's kind of, he's, he's followed his ex-girlfriend to Dundee to kind of try and reconnect with his kid, she's got a new partner, and um, he's had quite a volatile past. So she, people are a bit wary of him, and um, but he's got some musical talent, and he goes viral singing a, a cover of Frankie Miller's Darling, and uh, because and while he's doing that, he's also got a kind of tit for tat thing going on, like a beef with a drug dealer who's played by Brian McCarthy. Um, so it's he's kind of caught between these two worlds, kind of this following this musical talent or. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, going down this darker path, and it's it's, it's a lot. A lot. It's just about kind of being, you know, like a working class artist and the self sabotage. You know that we can. Yeah, I guess. Through, which I I'm, I'm, I'm I'm known for as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I've done that for eight years. to get that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, no, that's it. And Brian McCarthy's in it. He's he's great as well. You know. Yeah, man. So he's he's he plays a character called Ted in it, and um, and then there's uh, Shannon Allen's uh, one of your. Cassie, she was uh she's done a few music videos with a um, musical artist up to do kill uh, India Rose and she's done a few shots. Mm-hmm. Give a guy a great Dundee director called Strath Martin. But um she really shines in this man. She's a, like she kinda of, I, I, she's like just non traditional trained actor and just absolutely steals the show. And then another two leads is Connor McCarran from Spiral, of course. And Con- uh, I mean Connor's uh, uh, you know amazing actor. Oh natural so man. Amazing. Connor's just yeah, he's just so natural and uh it's just effortless, you know. It's like annoying. It's annoying how good he is. He's so effortless. He just doesn't without trying. You, you don't, yeah. you don't, you don't see it, you know. I, I never well, seen. I, I never. He, he started Nens, didn't he? Peter he Martin did. He did. Yeah, yeah. I never, I never seen Nens, um, but I was aware, you know, I was aware of him, and uh, yeah, you can. I mean, when you, you just feel something different with an actor that just does nothing but does everything, you know. That's it. That's exactly. It. That's exactly. <laughs> it. And I just feel like he needs. Um, People need to be aware of him again and just how good he is. And that's that's the if anything comes from dog days, all these yeah. people realizing Connor as a you know, he's a gem in Scotland and he needs to be he needs to be used. It's, more, a, it's but, a it's a strange business though where talent can really talent's so important, but it's it's so you've got it's the other side as well, isn't it? Because you you so many talented people that, that have been there down there up and down and up and down and don't get noticed. There's so much to it these days. Yeah. There's so much you can do if you're big in fucking social media and many followers you've got or what the fuck. Do you know what I mean? 100%. Yeah, man. It's like you know. the, the, the total perseverance here, man. There's something about here where it's like, you know, it's two steps forward and five back and you need you need to be willing to just not stop. Like, you can't stop, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. That's the main thing, man. It's like you just cannot give up because it's... Uh, it's, you what uh, you want to at times, you know. I feel like it's sometimes, you know, I feel like I feel like this week. Never mind. I mean, so it's like there's times where you want to give up, man, but you just you have to keep you have to persevere now, you have to keep going, man, because you know, why not? In, uh, you know? Aye. If it's in your DNA, you've no choice really. That's it, man. It's like I don't know, yeah, man, I don't have a backup plan. You know, this is it for me. <laughs> this is you know, is it it's either this or uh, you know, a life of crime I'll be <laughs> 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 life of crime and film that so it's back to fucking filmmaking yeah I, exactly I, like, well I'm, I'm I'm further on than you I'm I'm too uh, uh, many times I've well, just wanted to fucking pack it and then it's like and then you realise that I don't have, I've only got skills to fucking flip burgers you know yeah. what I mean that's that and it's I know, like, I'm too too. I'm too fucking old to go back the way so I've, I've got to yeah. find a way and and I think finding again finding your own voice and your own way of doing things is so important these days which yeah. you're doing you know um but uh, and what what do you, what's your take on the, what do you think about the the I don't know about so much the Scottish but it's the UK industry but the UK industry down south is like fucking Hollywood and whatever else what, what's your take on the Scottish it's hard for me to even say Scottish industry because it doesn't seem like a fucking industry do you know what no I, mean? I know such, I know I know it's weird I mean? it's, oh man it's strange man it is strange it's, it's strange it's like you know I don't I don't know man it's just it's, it's like, it seems like. <laughs> Being all honest, man, it feels like uh, this whole. I mean, I, 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 I don't want to ask me too much because I know you're 
you know, in the industry, you get some money for the industry. And I know you'd say what the fuck you like anyway. You know? I know, but look, man, what, 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 what I'm going to say is the truth, man. It feels, it feels like this industry survives on uh, having things in development that have never got any intention of making. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So I, I, we, I, exactly, yeah. yeah. They, 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 yeah. They, 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 they string people along and then never make a thing, you know what I mean? And that's why it's important that those people like me and you who are willing to say, fuck this, like, I'm going to make something. I'm going to get three, four pals together and we're going to fucking make something and we're going to keep doing it. But it's not about the... And if the industry comes back after that, well, well, then great, you know, but it's like, it yeah. feels like to me, like it's, um, you know, it's tricky, man. It just feels like, like it just feels there's not enough support here. Um, and it feels like we get the odd thing maybe once every, what, four or five years, usually by an English director like Ken Loach or something, you know, so it's like, we get the odd, yeah, we get the odd thing. Or, or with a great set for Hollywood. Do you know yeah, I mean? that's it. That's I mean, we're maybe so grateful, which is I, I think it's good for like um, people working uh, like in the crews and stuff. You know, like uh, like I like when production designers and people like that get jobs on these big things. But it's like it doesn't help. The, there's no writer directors getting a big no. It's still not uh, it, Indiana Jones. It, you know, <laughs> it's hi. It's still not the same like a country like France where they completely embrace the film industry and their film culture and they don't give a fuck about America. And they do this. They are they are they are thing. Hundred percent. I think that's who. That's who you kind of. That's probably who, like, people like us who are kind of like just you know passionate about making stuff. I think we need to kind of hit get in there, get in front of their eyes. You know, like the Italians, yeah. because those are the people who embraced Abel. You know what I mean? Those, 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 yeah, those guys, absolutely. Those that's, that's what he's always. That's yeah. The, I think that's the key, man. It's, it, I think you need to think outside of Scotland, and I'm learning that slowly. And, the hard way. Think, look, man, like, I think there's a lot of opportunities for good for things to be made here, but. It does feel like there's just a lot of work being done on stuff that's never going to get made. And it's I think, I, I think it's that thing Scorsese said where as well to be your own industry. <laughs> and I don't mean just completely on your own. I mean that, look, um, when I started doing it, I was obsessed that you've got to get a budget, right? Yeah. Um, you've got to get a budget. And there was, there was almost no fucking films made in Scotland when I got a budget, right? It just happened to be the right place at the right time and I never gave up for 18 months, right? Um, but I realised right away when I was running the circuit, um, I, I, I remember going to the Cannes Film Festival and seeing this poster, and it goes, that looks pretty shite. My poster's going to be colourful in Hollywood, look like a fucking movie, that looks shite. And it was a company that I went to see was going to give me some money, and it was Christopher Nolan's film for following. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. And then when I was on the circuit, I, done, I was on the big breakfast before it collapsed, just before it collapsed, promoting. I didn't want to be on there. I was fucking drunk. They had to drag me on. I didn't want to be on it, you know, because I hate, didn't want to promote the movie. I fucking hated it. So I had to get a bottle of fucking two bottles of wine in me, you know, to yeah. go on the big breakfast. And I met Robert Rodriguez. And that was the only reason I went on, because Robert Rodriguez was on there and I met him. I hadn't read his book. I hadn't read yeah. his book, but he looked at me as if to say, why are you so fucking down about your movie? And it was so well, it's everybody else controlled it. And, hey, I made mistakes, but it's good to, you know, but yeah. was, you know it as well. But uh, and then it was like when, then I read his book and it was like and then I read Nolan how he made the film for seven thousand dollars and, and and then I read Joe Cat is with Joe Cat him it's the big director in Hollywood he made yeah, his movie not, for ten thousand yeah. and not then you go back movie. exactly you see all the directors that made the movies for seven thousand ten thousand because yeah. if you do that you control a vision at the start and then you get some more That's freedom with people yeah, if, you go, if you get three hundred thousand right away you don't get any fucking control. You know, no, hundred percent, hundred percent, And the thing is, man, and you, you compromise so much that, that you end up feeling it's something you just can't help but feeling kind of used. You know what I mean? And it's kind of quite a heartbreaking feeling at times. Um, but but the thing I'm trying to say is that. Um, where people are talking about the Scottish film industry, the dames, oh, we need help, we need support. No, look, look at what you can shoot with these days. Back then, yeah. you couldn't I didn't have access to it. I just shouldn't film. Yeah, you exactly. shoot a fucking film on a phone. So it's like, I think everybody that really wants to be a filmmaker should go out and make fucking five short films or ten yeah. short films with no money. Yep. And then and then that gets shared. And then, exactly. then, you, then you see a Scottish film industry that are the little fucking rebels doing their own thing. And then exactly. they spy each other. Do you know what I mean? 100%. And that's the thing. There needs to be more, there needs to be more of a kind of community here too, man. I feel like everybody's kind of... Aye, we're all against yeah. each other. We're all oh, like, I, I, it's that's, competition. That's, that's, that's either against each other or isolated and just kind of like, Aye. you know, and just by yourself. And it kind of feels, it's, it's a lonely fucking existence, man. Like, like oh, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's quite grim, man. And um, it just feels but, like there's no, yeah, there's no support. 
I, I think that's the thing. Like, look at why does um, why do all these tech companies, all these apps come out of Silicon Valley? Because all these brains get together and they inspire each other. It should be yeah. like that. There's so many people going to make, and even if they don't get together, if everybody's seen that Scottish community making all these films, it inspires each other. Somebody made that in a DSLR with 50 quid. Somebody made that in a smartphone with 50 quid. Instead of what we're also, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, I, exactly. I, I think people forget this game is not a competition. This game no. is subjective. We're all different. So we can all help yeah. each inspire each other. We're not taking yeah. anything away from each other. Do you know what no, I mean? No, that's hundred percent not at all, man. Yeah. That's like, no, definitely like that's so true, man. It's like well not, it's like uh, yeah, we just need building it up more. I mean, that's the thing, man. Yeah. I mean definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But uh no man, I'm I'm so happy to see you in the last because the last time I spoke to you, you've done a few films since then, you know, and I um I hope it keeps going that way because I know it's fucking. I know. I'm, 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 I'm waiting on the train stopping as well, man. I'm waiting on all coming in. The thing is, that, look, I know you. I know you've got the side, but we'll just go out and shoot fucking someone without permission. But at the same time, you want to have if you you, you want to be able to have more freedom, work with better actors, and work your way up. So yeah. it, you know you should be getting. You know you you're proving yourself without a doubt. So you should be getting. You know. I appreciate um, that, but you know. Well, well, I was going to ask you. Um, I remember a few. You were going to do a film. Uh, is it portrait? It was interesting. Yeah, man. That's yeah. that's how I ended up losing my two teeth. So I tried to shoot. About, I tried to shoot at New Year's um, the day before New Year's Eve. The whole thing kind of was yeah. So essentially, it's just me. It's kind of like falling down in Glasgow, but it's like it would be the dangerous part about it is it's me playing a version of myself, and um, it's a guy who's grieving the death of his dad, and they kind of just does a bunch of drugs and then goes and they kind of falling down escalating <laughs> course of mayhem through Glasgow but recording it all on his social media story and right. that would just be the whole thing entirely on my phone and I shot him a large chunk of it and then uh, I lost one of my crowns because I, I got drunk with one of the actors and then uh, <laughs> so I, I didn't end up finishing it but what I did learn though is when after I shot scenes and showed it to people I got the reaction I wanted. That people didn't people didn't realise it was a film. It made them feel really uncomfortable. They thought I was sharing a viral video with them. And uh, right. well, that's good. And yeah, that that feeling of like, like just that feeling of really uncomfortable, like kind of sickening feeling that I caused the people really makes me want to make it bigger. Like so, I'm thinking of maybe doing it as like a a, a portrait mode feature, which I know is fucking insane, right. but it's better the experimental thing where if it, exactly it, yeah I think. It's that David Bowie quote. If you're too yeah. comfortable in the one area, you've got to push yourself where you're uncomfortable. 100%. Um, and, 100%. and again, if you're, if you're making it for nothing, then it doesn't matter because you're oh, going to lose it. And the thing is, like, the one thing I can guarantee from everybody I pull into it, and probably including yourself, <laughs> when I'm, I'm, it's going to go big. Uh, I'm going to think it's going to, be a, it's going to be a longer shoot than I imagined. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. There won't be waiting around. There's no sound recorders. There's nothing like that. It'll be a lot of fun. Well, that's why I'd say with Stevie yesterday, we went out and shot, um, for two, last week we shot one day and finished yesterday, shot a 25-minute um, thing called uh, thing, uh, Mad World. And then we shot it, I, I took my, DS, yeah, I took my DSLR and I said, um, I was going to shoot and I went, no, we've got to go on fucking tube trains, we've got to go on bars, we've got to, oh, we need permission, no liability, oh, fuck all that, let's just shoot it on the phone. So we yep. shot the whole thing on the phone and... I mean, I've shot stuff in phones before, a couple of scenes, yeah. and I added some scenes, but I never shot the whole thing on a phone before. And fuck me, man, the freedom. It was like yep. exciting as fuck. I know. Even moments that weren't in the script. I had a script. Then I says to Stevie and Sucky Hall Street, I says, there's a little bit, I just wrote a speech within about two minutes that came in a few lines. I said, say that, right, let's get into this alley. That you're at your head and fucking drugs for a minute. He went, what? He went, all right, let's do it. It's just the way you could just... And then nobody yeah. looked at us. The no, that, went. That, that man goes so much. It's like it, it, it takes away so much of the pressure of waiting around. You just you just go for it, man. We sort of yeah. that, these devices are just getting more and more powerful. I know. You know it's like, but, this, well, this this shit's on eight K. You know what I mean? I think yeah. they're fucking. I think they said what a roller. You know what I mean? I know. Like, I know. <laughs> but <laughs> the only reason I felt I could do that was because of Stevie of what we for so long, and he knew how I worked into role yeah. If I if I say to some other actors that are used to the lines and say, and then they turn up, and I've got the whole kit in a fucking bag this size, and we're shooting. Nano. Oh wait a minute, where's my Scott? <laughs> do you no, know definitely. I'm the same. No, I know you're saying you, you learn. You do learn like what people you can involve in your. 
But what people, what people trust you? Who trusts you? Like to you know entrust you exactly. But I think yeah, if you then do that stuff and then they see it and you go that well, oh, that was done with that, but that exactly. could result. Yes, yes. So and at least you want people thinking like that, man. That's the thing. It's like everybody's too busy waiting on Aye. big daddy and mommy to give them permission. And then look, man, I'm saying this to some dudes fucking making stuff that way as well. But it's like. No man, like for the up and comers, man, like fucking and everybody else, and just who's just interested in making stuff. No matter what age you are, man, like uh, just do it. Just fucking you do, love it. Doing it. You love yeah, doing it. You love doing it. Yeah, I just love doing it and enjoy it and just have fun with it, man. That's that's I, my main thing. I think the thing is here as well. Like I learned on my first film, right? See when I was on the set, and I'm thinking, I want to tell them to go to fuck with us because they want to change this. I want to tell them to go to fuck, and, and I was very inexperienced, right? It was the first film. Yeah. But I tell them to go to fuck, and I always thought I want to try and get a budget again one day. But I want to be in a position where I can look. I'll tick all the boxes that they want to tick if I'm working with millions of dollars, whatever. I'll tick yeah, it's exactly a market that, rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but if it's going to break for that, I want to be able to tell them to go to fuck. And I can only tell them to go to fuck if I've got my own film wee industry built that'll yeah, go back to that. Yeah. Then yeah. I can push further. Then I can say, like, okay, I'm trying to get millions for a fucking action movie. Yeah, it's a lot of numbers. Probably never yeah. care. But but then I don't really care. I'm a madman. It's like I don't care. It's like I'll, I'll send it to so and so. I send it to so and so. Oh, we might be interested, but, but I'm not. I'm not desperate. Years ago, no. I was fucking desperate. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, you're yeah. doing your own thing. You look. You understand what I'm saying? Because you know, if you didn't get any money tomorrow, you just fucking do your own thing. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's the thing, man. For all making money in this industry, I'm just ended up in more debt. You know what I mean? I was, I was better off. I was better off with benefits. Honestly, I have that the other day. I'm, I'm honestly more comfortable with making no money in this industry. <laughs> Make money, make the wee bit of money I've made in this industry has fucked my whole life forever. So it's like, it's almost like I'm like, I, I welcome them fucking shutting me down because I'm just gonna, they're not ready, man. I'm, I'll fucking, I'm, I'll, I'm gonna make some crazy I heard, whole bunch of stuff. I heard you saying that the other day, there should be some sort of money management when you get money, how you don't, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you don't fucking spend it all. No, man, no. I got bought, I got bought a few, um. Yeah, I bought a few BMWs some, for folk. Some, some, <laughs> na- some nice gear, new shoes. Ah, <laughs> gear, right. <laughs> gear. <laughs> anyway, James, okay, let's just finalise then, because I don't want to keep you long, mate. I really appreciate this. So let's dog days when it's going to play at GFT. Glasgow yeah. Film Theatre, we just got moved to GFT 1, the big screen, man. It's on March 5th. It's right. a Sunday. It's at half three. If anybody in Glasgow, man, I'd really appreciate it if you'd buy a ticket and come along. I mean, tomorrow to me, I'll be there, man. We'll, we'll get a drink afterwards, man. So anybody else could buy, up for grabbing a ticket. Come along, man. We'll have a party afterwards, man. It'll be fun. And you're going to do a Q&A uh, as yeah, well? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Go on, on the cast. We'll be there and we're, we're, we're going to make a night of it, man. So everybody come, man, please. And I'll uh, mean the world to me. So I'm going to push this out there, man. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Know. Thank you. Um, Thanks, James. You know, appreciate it, man. It's great. Well, thank you, man. You. I, can, I, can chat, I can chat to your fucking name. I know, you I just want to talk to you non stop, man. I'm honest. I, I, I didn't go pick up my prescription, but I could honestly just sit here and talk to you non stop. <laughs> well, we may do that one time and just get yeah, on a podcast for a few years and just chat with some beers and just chat. Yeah, well, man, and then chop, and chop it down, up. Man. Definitely, me and Connor should sit down and just have a laugh, Aye. man. Just, you know, definitely. Aye, and just uh, and we'll shoot fucking seven hours and then chop up. And there's a thousand. Videos for fucking TikTok. And- exactly, man. That's it. I, no. I, know, I need to learn how that works, man. I feel like I'm terrible at TikTok. I'm trying to learn. Uh, I TikTok is is um, I, I'm the same. I, I've went on it, but it's like fucking man. I, sometimes put it this way: I put a video. One, I've got a crime lord one for TikTok, right? I don't always go on it, but I put a crime lord video on TikTok, and it's me standing at the door, just opening the door. And there's a there's a woman on the bed and she's got clothes on. There's nothing for me in it. And it's like 15 seconds and they get 260 thousand fucking views on yeah, TikTok. It seems, it seems like there's no rhyme or reason. It seems like she, when you when you really and try for views, you don't get any. Exactly. And I go, I can't get my fucking brain in it. And then yeah, and then you put you put then you put something where somebody's shooting with fucking machine gun, you get 25 views, <laughs> and then it's blocked. I know. I know. I know. It's you nuts. Know. <laughs> But, so, I'm, I'm, but I'm, 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 I'm determined to learn how that how that works. I do think that can be an asset, and I think, and I think that's one thing that the me and you are kind of really curious about is like how can we use these new forms, uh, yeah, yeah, social media yeah. And stuff to help us and like can use it as an asset to push, you know, uh, I think you push content out there. I think TikTok would be good for you because as well because your your films you know, there's a, you know set in Scotland. There's a huge um, Scottish community on TikTok. You know, yeah, when you go on, yeah. you know when you go yeah. on Instagram, it's very much the world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yep. if you go on TikTok and you put Scottish in there, it's very much like a local. It feels like very much you're in Scotland. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. You know, definitely. So TikTok would be really, you know, 
Um, it's worth playing, just an experiment play around it, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. It's, worth, 100%, it's, not, 100%. it's not just dancing videos, whatever. It's all sorts of shit. No, I know, it's I know, fucking, no, definitely, 100%. You know, definitely. You know, so I've seen you know. really hilarious Scottish videos on there. I mean, so I do think you're right. That is, that is a community hit, man, 100%. But it's so fucking weird. I saw a family in a council house in the modern or 60s, and she's drinking a bottle of Buckfast and she's shouting at the fucking. Or daughters or whatever, and they're throwing things at each other, and the place looks as if it been cleaned in fucking ten months. They look like fucking great gardens, right? And well, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they, look, it, it, they had a fucking million followers. So I know. They probably just they have TikTok sitting drinking all day. <laughs> I know it's that's it, man. Yeah, look, man, man, and who's the judge? You know, I mean, that, maybe that's I know, what I'm saying. I know. I just that's thought, what yeah. But you know, this, this is what I'm trying to say. This is where I learn stuff about this. The attention as well is no, so important man, because hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, you know, it's like so. I may end up just fucking doing stupid dance, a thousand stupid dances, just to fucking do. You know, put a pan in my fucking head and start. You know what I'm talking about? You know? <laughs> I know. I know. Well, let me go that way anyway, because we make fucking crack up and then become hits on TikTok and then we can fund more films. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I know, I know, I know. Definitely, you're right, you're right. And, anyway, James, no keep you, man. Thanks, that was a great chat, you. Um, no, it was amazing, David. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I like I lagged a wee bit in the beginning. I'm glad my technology is caught up. It's probably my screen yeah. here as well. But uh, looking forward to the, the, the screening next month and I'll plug this out there. Oh, I love it, man. Thank you so much, David. It means world, man. Thank you, bro. Right, okay, mate. Catch you later. Yeah, but I'll see you soon, bro. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, bro. Cheers. Cheers.